Greetings to all the viewers. The session is going to cover the intermediate chemistry will be fetching for your international entrance and the competitive exams as well. India is conducting JE advanced. JE means examination twice a year to get the admission into IIT and the NIT stream that is the technical domain. NEET exam will be conducted all across India to get the admission into the medical colleges. Telangana and Andhra Pradesh government are conducting MCT examination to get the admission into the BTEC stream. In addition to all this, <clears throat> if you are serious about the government organized uh, uh, competitive examinations, their general studies paper will be available. General science content will be there. The session what we are covering is very much fetching for that kind of preparation as well. Let's enter into our today's session. The Nobel Prize in the Chemistry for the year 1993 was awarded for the contribution to the developments of methods within DNA-based chemistry jointly with one half to the Carrie B. Mullis for his invention of polymerase chain reaction method and with one half to the Michael Smith for his fundamental contributions to the establishment of oligonucleotide-based site-directed uh, mutagenesis and its development for protein studies. Purely the entire chemistry is uh, revolving around the DNA genetic matter and that method establishment was carried, uh, that is one part, in another <clears throat> Protein studies were carried in a mutagenesis, right? So these two related with the biological organism, biological related inventions. So that this uh, prestigious work got accorded with the most uh, eminent prize called the Nobel Prize, that is the full recognition. Here, here are the scientists you can clearly observe, Carrie B. Mullis and Michael Smith. Uh, these two are together awarded the Nobel Prize for the year 1993. There is a brief info regarding the scientist who ever contributed for 1993 Chemistry Nobel Prize. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award 1993 Nobel Prize in the Chemistry for contribution to the development of methods within DNA-based chemistry. DNA-related uh, chemistry methods got uh, unveiled by these two scientists together so that it is accorded with the Nobel Prize. Dr. Carrie B. Mullis, Lazola, California, United States of America for his invention of polymerase chain reaction PCR method. Right. So here polymerase chain re reaction is very essential. That is for uh, DNA synthesis and the DNA based activities. We need this. So that's the reason why it was accorded. In either half contributed by the Professor Michael Smith, University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada, for his <clears throat> fundamental contributions to establishment of oligonucleotide-based site-directed mutagenesis and its development for protein studies, right? So oligonucleotide is nothing but nucleosides will be there, nucleotides will be there. In that oligo denotes what a small chain is present, we can say that uh, that that length of chain is regarded as the oligopolymer. If the polymer is a very longer in the length, then we can say polymer. Oligo means a certain extent of moiety is of uh, limited in number. So that uh, this oligonucleotide. Nucleoside and nucleotide, what difference you can notice? Nucleotide is nothing but where you can notice phosphate base will be there and a sugar moiety will be there and either purine or pyrimidine is there. So this kind of uh, three compounds are together if present that is called a nucleotide. So these are the materials which uh, through which DNA genetic matter got composed. This is a progress, a progress of the gene technology through the two new methods. One is a polymer chain reaction, PCR method, site-directed mutagenesis. These two discoveries, these two research explorations got accorded with the prestigious Nobel Prize in the chemistry for the year 1993. Both are related with the genetic matter. Uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. Let's go with what research they carried, the chemical methods that carry Mullis and Michael Smith have each developed for studying DNA molecules of genetic material have further hastened the rapid development of genetic engineering. What they carried the research, that research laid the foundation for the next level Next level, new uh, branch of the education called genetic engineering. 
the two methods have greatly stimulated basic biochemical research and opened the way for new applications in the medicine and biotechnology as well. Whatever explorations they got carried, they further found eminent applications in our medicine and biotechnology as well. The applications of Mullis PCR method are already many, right? So many applications, whatever this PCR, PCR denotes what polymerase chain reactions, whatever uh, they invented that found many applications already. It is, for example, possible using simple equipment to multiply a given DNA segment from complicated genetic material millions of times in a few hours. So whatever genetic matter is there that can be that can be propagated, that can be uh, propagated in a multiple a uh, number of uh, chain length so that multiplication is possible on this uh, dna segment by using this uh, polymerase chain reaction methodology it is a kind of polymer synthesis as every everybody aware polymer is of long chains dna basis dna material is also the kind of naturally occurring polymer and which can be facilitated by facilitated by this pcr method the method offers new possibilities, particularly in medical diagnostics and uh, used, for example, discovering the HIV virus for the faulty genes in the hereditary diseases. So this is the way medical diagnostic tool it will be. And also for the identification of the DD disease, HIV virus can be identified. Researchers can also produce deoxyribonucleic acid from animals that became extinct a million years ago by using PCR method on fossil material. Though the kind of organism is not existing, but still uh, we are able to identify, we are able to predict uh, that kind of that uh, extincted uh, animal uh, based on this PCR method from the fossils. This is another uh, historical uh, application we can say, which is based on this kind of invention, what they carried. The genetic code uh, programmed into a DNA molecule determines the number and the sequence of amino acids. Obviously, proteins are kind of uh, polypeptides. These polypeptide chains are formed starting from amino acids and those also functional properties of the protein. With the Smith method possible to reprogram the genetic code. So whatever already everybody about that genetic code is made up of triplets. So triplets are present in that. All the triplets are joined by this kind of linkage which are available in the repeated manner. Are on, on, on that genetic code. If one of the triplet got missed out, what happens? Genetic disorders are possible. Few people are existing, are suffering with the genetical disorders, are hereditary genetical disorders. That is because of uh, that is because of damage of that uh, triplet codes that is called a genetic code. So that by using ge this uh, genetic engineering method, reprogramming is possible. Wherever the repair or damage we already facing, there we can introduce the healthy triplet over there. So that reprogramming of that genetic code that is giving a healthy, even uh, the uncurable genetic disorders can be treated by means of this kind of new invention, whichever carried. Uh, we, they are able to replace the specific amino acid in the protein or else. So if that is the case, where damage already done. And another possibility we have, normally existing genetic code was there that used to give. So genetic code is the deciding factor for the, all the living organisms. What is the genetic code? That extent of characters we will have. If you are going to replace the existing genetic code, that means existing triplet codes by new one, what happens? New kind of characters will be imbalanced. Mm, that is called as a, uh, that is called a genetic in, that is possible by means of genetic engineering as well one condition we, we will go with the treatment of genetic disorders and the second one genetically new uh, new organisms will be introduced by means of this genetic engineering as well by reprogramming of the genetic code 
This is termed site directed mutagenesis. Mutagenesis means what we are going to we are going to modify certain extent of whatever existing genetic code. A new uh, kind of programming got carried over. The possibilities of studying the structure and the functions of the protein molecules have changed fundamentally. Hence, also the possibilities for uh, constructing the proteins with the new properties. So, because we reprogram the entire one, so that new polypeptide chain is uh, generated, which in turn uh, originate a uh, new properties containing proteins. Items are being made, for example, to improve the protein stability so that proteins can manage care technical process to tailor antibodies so that they can attack the cancer cells and uh, to alter the proteins to create the faster growing crop strains. The term protein design has already become a concept. So by means of this reprogramming of the genetic code for the regeneration of new protein content so that what applications we can notice uh, by means of technical process, the entire reprogramming is ca carried by the technical attempts only, right? Mm, so that antibodies, antibodies are nothing but which are the defensive mechanism in the living organism to avoid the all kind of microorganism. So that um, disease prone regions, disease uh, tendencies got uh, are protected by means of this, these antibodies only, right? And even cancer cells are not uh, probed, uh, not prone for the uh, what evaluation, so that uh, we can we can suppress these cancer cell curation for the cancer cells also possible if new proteins got introduced. And the protein create the faster growing crop strain. This is another application we can notice. So uh, in the croplands, as already we have heard that land is a limited resource and uh, the demand for the food supply is, uh, is increasing exponentially. We are not supposed to create the land as much as required for that demand as population evaluation. That's the reason why we have to go for the alternative. Uh, from that limited resource, we have to get the maximum yield that, that is possible by this kind of genetic engineering process where repro reprogramming of the proteins are required. The term protein design has already become a concept. This protein design concept was introduced by the scientist Paul Smith, right? This is the way the Nobel Prize uh, is uh, given for the outstanding work in a, in a biological organisms, which is purely related with the genetic matter that is DNA-based chemistry was accorded with the esteemed prize. This is the way we are going to conclude the question one and entered into the question number two, Cambridge International Education. The question was collected from. Diamond is a form of carbon. The structure of the diamond is shown here and it is of uh, uh, it is of tetrahedral, uh, tetrahedral carbon that is linked in the hexagonal or uh, hexagonal rings over there and all the carbons are sp3 hybridized and uh, uh, and uh, kind of a cohesive bonds are existing in that molecule choose the word which best describe the structure of the diamond being it is the kind of uh, tetrahedral carbons are linked in such a way so that it is becoming a hardest material at that condition what is the suitable suitable term in order to mention its geometry Draw the circle around your chosen answer. Giant will be there, ionic will be there, metallic will be there, simple will be there. If this is the condition, uh, obviously we will go with joint only because uh, all the carbons are joined in such a manner so that it is it is a lengthy extended polymeric uh, carbons containing allotrope, hardest allotrope, hardest ever found allotrope of the carbon we will notice. So this is suitable. Ionic, there is no way for getting charges over there. Electrostatic forces are not available. And all are joined by the covalent bonds itself by the sp3 hybridization. We can strike out this ionic. Metallic, being carbon is a non-metallic in nature, we are not supposed to go with this metallic nature. Rather, we can say it is a crystalline one. 
simple. So this is not the simple one. Rather, it is the kind of repeated uh, unit cell combination in the particular manner so that exactly acting one will be a joint one. So let me give the uh, clear description about that one. Joint cubic crystal uh, is, is the exact description. Cubic crystal is the geometry for that one. Crystalline, crystallinity, amorphous nature are categorized based on the arrangement of atoms. Crystalline structure denotes what if the atoms are highly regular, highly uh, pointed in a particular orientation, so that crystalline nature will be accorded for the compound. Definite properties we can accord for that. It's a kind of joint cubic crystal and it is uh, made up of eight atoms uh, per unit cell. So in a single unit cell, you can notice the eight atoms are there. And uh, hardest ever known natural compound uh, on the earth and high density is accorded being it is all the atoms are compact and closely packed over or uh, so that we we can say high density material and uh, being it is the hardest we can go with the abrasive nature uh, abrasive nature tends to cut any other materials as we are taking a knife to cut our vegetables in the same manner this diamond is used to cut any other materials so this is the way abrasive material so this, uh, this is about the brief description regarding the uh, diamond so that it is the joint cubic crystal lattice. Uh, we concluded question two and move on to the question number three collected from 2015. Uh, J advanced paper one question it will be. The total number of lone pair of electrons in uh, N2O3. So we can say nitrogen polyoxide is total number of lone pair of electrons in N2O3 is right. So dinitrogen trioxide in specific sense we can say. So in order to give the lone pair of electrons, we have to go with Lewis structure of that one. Lewis structure is nothing but representation of geometry of the molecule along with the lone pair of electrons. If lone pair of electrons are mentioned, that is regarded as a Lewis structure. So this is the way you can write uh, N2O3 molecule where... Uh, Two nitrogens are linked directly on each nitrogen. Double bonded oxygens are located and one more nitrogen is also having the dative bond with the oxygen atom. This is the way we can write, uh, write the N2O3 chemical geometry in the Lewis form. Whenever oxygen is found, oxygen obviously is uh, always accompanied by the two lone pair of electrons so that these are the conventional oxygen so that two lone pair of electrons we can write upon. And this nitrogen is located with the three bonds. Nitrogen is trivalent, everybody aware about. So that whenever three bonds are accompanied with the nitrogen and a free lone pair of electron is available on its surface. But second nitrogen is having three bonds and neither lone pair is given to the oxygen indicated with the arrow. Here we need to mention. And whenever electrons are transferred to the oxygen, that is a coordinate covalent bond we can mention so that lone pair uh, uh, is absent on this second nitrogen. Rather, one of the electron will well, one of the electron pair will be extra added on the oxygen so that this oxygen arrow indicated oxygen is mentioned with the three lone pair of electrons. Let me count all possible lone pairs. One, two, three are noticed over uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight lone pair of electrons are located on N2O3 so that the uh, possible answer for N2O3 number of lone pairs are eight lone pairs are available. If we write Lewis structure, then only we can calculate. This is the way question three cat uh, concluded and we entered into the question number four. This is collected from the 2014 uh, J advanced question paper one conducted by the National Testing Agency. The correct combination of the names for isomeric alcohol with the molecular formula C4H10O is R. So here the compound was given, the compound molecular, uh, molecular formula is given as C4H10O. And they mentioned these are the compounds of hydroxy. At that condition, if hydroxy is there, so uh, in hydroxy compounds, how many possible isomers we can notice? Isomers are nothing but molecular formula remains same. Either position of the functional group varied or else carbon skeleton varied or else uh, 
So in that composition, the structure if varied, that is said to be a kind of isomeric one. So uh, there are there are possible uh, hydroxy compounds we will see. So these many hydroxy compounds we can notice generally four carbon chain in the straight chain manner you can locate like this and a four carbon chain where the, our terminal carbon is accompanied by OH. If this is the case, we can write it as a butane one all as its IUPAC name. IUPAC stands for International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. And the butane one all is the IUPAC name for the given compound. In the general sense, we can pronounce as a N-butanol. This is the way first compound will be there. Let me shift this OH from first carbon to second carbon. We will achieve in either isomer with the same number of carbons and hydrogens, oxygens as well. At that condition, hydroxy is located on the second carbon. Let me mention butane to all. This is the positional isomerism. At first isomer, you can find the OH at first carbon. In the second, OH at second carbon. This is the way positional isomerism. Butane to all is in either isomer, uh, which is uh, generally called as a secondary butanol. And go with this one. If, if, if you want to shift this OH to any other carbon, again, you can term it as the 2-butanol only because uh, wherever hydroxy is there, we have to start numbering from that end. So that 3-butanol may not be possible. The maximum extent either 1-butanol, 2-butanol only. 3-butanol may not be available because if you mention OH at this carbon, again, it will become 2-butanol only. So, that, so uh, we have to go with the positional isomerism for 1 and 2. And this is the case. This is the case you can go with. I'm not going to shift OH. Rather, I'm going to shift the alkyl. So this carbon is shifted over there. Whenever carbon is shifted, this carbon surrounded with 1, 2, 3 methyl and one side OH is there. Uh, according to IUPAC, we can name it as 2-methylpropane to all. Being longest chain is the parent. So here three carbon chain will be taken. One of the methyl is becoming one of the methyl is becoming substituent. So that 2 methyl propane to all is the IUPAC name. And in general sense, we can say tertiary butanol. So this is the primary one. This is the secondary one. This is the tertiary one. This is kind of structural isomerism. Or else we can say chain isomerism as well. Chain length got changed, no? Here longest chain you can notice. Here the shortest one. So that this is the chain isomerism. So many isomers are coming into the picture for the same alcoholic compound. Okay. These two are called the positional isomers. And these two are called the chain isomers. And this is also the part of chain isomerism only. How can we say Chain length is here uh, different. Here chain length is any other way. It is mentioned in any other way. How can we mention any other way? If methyl is shifted to last carbon only, one of the methyl is shifted to last carbon only. Here the chain is 1, 2, 3. On second carbon, methyl will be there. Here on first carbon only, methyl is there. Uh, sorry, here second carbon, methyl is there. But a third carbon is having... Uh, and either th this methyl is shifted over there. But here, the, the second carbon is having two methyl like this. So that let me mention two methyl propane one all. Okay, hydroxy is present on first carbon itself. Here, uh, second carbon. So that this is another any uh, possible isomer, isobutanol we can say. So here, first one, third one, fourth one are the part of chain isomers. First and second are the part of positional isomers. If this is the case, how many are regarded as a combinations of isomeric hydroxy compounds? Tertiary butanol is the isomer. We already just saw. 2 methyl propanol is also there. 2 methyl propanol is there. Tertiary, uh, tertiary butanol is there. So or this is the kind of isomeric compound. And 1,1-dimethyl uh, one 1,ol one may not be there. 1,1-dimethyl, one one we can't notice anywhere. 1,1-dimethyl one one may not be available anywhere so that we can strike off option B. Option C, N-butanol, butane 1,ol. Uh, N-butanol, if, if you see... N-butanol will be there. N-butanol IUPAC name will be butane 1,ol. So this is one of the isomer for this uh, isomer. Uh, 
hydroxy compound. So that C is also right answer. Isobutyl alcohol, which is called a 2 methyl propane 1 ol. Isobutyl alcohol 2 methyl propane 1 ol. This is, this is also in either isomeric form. So uh, D is also correct. Only B is wrong. How can we say? Tertiary butanol, what will be the IUPAC name? Tertiary butanol IUPAC name will be 2 methyl propane 2 ol. But they mentioned as 1, 1, 1 dimethyl. 1 ol is the wrong representation, right? That's the reason why we can uh, tick out A, C, and D as the correct answers for question number 4. This is the way IUPAC nomenclature plays a vital role. Uh, if 100 members are there, in order to identify the person, we need to mention their name. In the same manner, IUPAC nomenclature also gives the distinctive names for all the organic compounds. That's why it plays a vital role in naming of compounds. Go with the question number five. Question number five is collected from the Telangana MSET examination for the year uh, 2019. Which of the following method can be used for the identification of percentage composition of halogen present in the organic compound? Percentage composition of halogen to be identified. This is an analytical, uh, practical based question. It will be, Ikrindi vati lo, oka carbonic sammelanam lo, halogen sangatana shatani kanugunutaku. Upayoginche paddati edi. Halogen sangatana shatamanta into the percentage composition of halogen. So, in order to identify, they mentioned Zeldolz method. Zeldolz method used to identify the percentage of nitrogen, but here they mentioned halogen. Dumas process is also not correct. Lawson's process is used to identify the elements like uh, presence of sulfur, presence of nitrogen, presence of halogens. We can identify this is a qualitative method. Lawson's process is the qualitative. Just we can, we can identify what element is there. What element is there if identified that is called what a qualitative. But uh, percentage composition means what exact quantity we are identifying that is called a qual quantitative. That quantitative process is uh, noticed in the carriers method, carriers paddhatilo jesar. So let's see how can we go with carriers process. Various process formula for the percentage composition of halogen is equal to atomic mass of the halogen. Given compound, how much atomic mass is there that can be taken by molecular mass of silver halide. So, silver halide is added as a reagent. So, molecular weight of silver, uh, for example, you can take silver chloride. And mass of silver chloride, how much extent we are adding to that uh, unknown compound, that mass of silver chloride can be taken by mass of the compound. So uh, whatever uh, sample pro sample uh, compound we are taking, whose uh, weight we have to take it, either one gram, five grams, whatever we are taking that to be mentioned so that we can say it is the uh, qualitative, uh, sorry, quantitative analysis. We are mentioning each and every compound in its uh, quantity. And being it is the percentage so that let me multiply with 100 so that atomic mass of the halogen, uh, uh, that may be chlorine, bromine, iodine, uh, whatever the kind it might be. Atomic weight can be taken. Molecular weight of silver oxide, silver halide and mass of silver halide by mass of compound multiplied with 100. So this is the way we can go with uh, calculation of percentage composition of halogen by means of carriers method. This is the way we can confirm carriers process is suitable for this identification of percentage composition of halogen. By this question five, the correct answer is option number four. Let's go with question number six. Which of the following reaction produce alkane as the product? In order to get the alkane as the product, what reaction is suitable? Ekrindi cheriyalilo, alkane utpannanga erpal chedi edi. In order to get alkane as the product, uh, let's see what are the chemical reactions which already given. Sodium carboxylate can be treated with sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. At that condition, calcium oxide and sodium hydroxide together called lime, sorry, lime and soda. Lime soda if added with sodium carboxylate. Calcium oxide used to remove carbon dioxide so that it will be turned into calcium carbonate. So we will get alkane as the product. 
Here, this is called a carbonyl compound ketone. Acetone was taken. Zinc amalgam concentrated HCl when added. This together regarded as a Clemenson reducing agent. The process is Clemenson reduction. Clemenson reduction will convert carbonyl compounds into alkyl alkane compounds so that here also you can get alkane as the product. So, 2 is also right answer. This triple bonded compound was taken. This is called butyne. When butyne was taken, lithium aluminum hydride uh, addition giving rise to reduction. It is the strong reducing agent. Reduction giving rise to the double bonded compound so that we can strike up this. Third is not giving alkane as the product. Whenever this tertiary butyl chloride added with uh, sodium borohydride, again there is a possibility to get the alkane. Let's see the possibilities. This is a sodium carboxylate upon reaction with lime and soda giving rise to the RH. And calcium oxide absorb the carbon dioxide giving calcium carbonate as one of the byproduct. And in either acetone upon treating with zinc amalgam concentrated HCl you will get propane that is alkane. ABO reaction is called Clemenson reduction. It converts aldehydes and ketones into corresponding alkanes. And here is the butyne. Triple bonded compound was there treated with lithium aluminum hydride. Triple bond will be turned into a double bond. It is not possible. So that alkenes are the products for triple bonded compounds with the reduction of lithium aluminum hydride. Sodium borohydride is added to this uh, tertiary butyl uh, chloride so that chloro will be replaced with hydrogen. It is also regarded as alkane. So Alkane is the product in 1, 2 and 4. 1, 2, 4 are the correct answers for this question number 6. This is the way we concluded the entire session and gone with the different uh, kind of uh, regions of chemistry where we uh, entered into organic uh, physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry, application oriented chemistry, everything got covered over so that the session is really informative and uh, I am sincerely requesting you all to like the channel. In order to comment, uh, there, there, is, uh, there is a question. Can you please mention the composition of um, Clemenson reduction process and also uh, Clemenson reduction to be mentioned? The chemical reaction related with the Clemenson reduction to be mentioned over. So that is uh, mentioned as a uh, equation in this comment box for the session and share with us parents who are more uh, curious about the examinations definitely the session will be really informative for the enthusiastic students subscribe the channel so that we will come up with the new content in the near future definitely thank you one and all for your consistent listening thank you